Good morning. I want to thank Tanya and Viv for inviting me and inviting the Data and Democracy Initiative to co-sponsor this really exciting event. It's been a great two days, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you about the Rashomon Project. This is one of a number of projects that we are working on here at the Citrus Data and Democracy Initiative. Just a couple of words about, um, I don't know why that's not showing up, right? Uh, about what Citrus is, we're part of a, a consortium of um, research units affiliated with the University of California. We're based at Berkeley, but other campuses include Davis, Merced, and Santa Cruz. The somewhat awkward acronym stands for Computer Information Technology Research in the Interest of Society. So we're charged with using IT uh, tools to approach various social problems, and my colleagues there also work on issues related to energy and healthcare and intelligent infrastructure, so including uh, water and cities. The Data and Democracy Initiative really came on board about a year ago when I started as the director, and um, the Rashomon Project is one of several projects that we're, that we're working on there. It really stems from the uh, protests that you'll recall happened here on several UC campuses in November of 2011. This is the iconic figure from UC Davis where the security officer is pepper spraying the protesters who are sitting on the ground. Um, but then you'll also notice the third group behind them where everyone has a, a camera, either a cell phone camera or a professional camera. And as I was thinking about it this morning, this picture implies that there's also a whole scrum of people on this side, right, who's taking the picture of the people taking pictures um, of the people sitting on the ground. So each person has their own video, or their own photo, and they're going to upload it independently to their Facebook page or to YouTube or Vimeo, any of a number of social media sharing sites. But every individual account of this event doesn't really give you the full picture. So what our uh, colleagues at, at UC Berkeley were working on is a, a toolkit that is going to collect these photos and videos from a number of sources upload them to a secure server, run them through YouTube's face blurring tool to obscure the, the activist faces, and then display them in a way so that you can see simultaneously multiple videos of the same event. So this is basically what it looks like in the prototype. You can select however many videos you want to see and then run them all at the same time. It also has a feature where you can narrow the time frame. If you want to scroll in on a particular moment or 30 seconds, you can have that create a loop as well. So it uses the metadata in the files to use a rough alignment to, to line them up, and then they're using uh, audio um, tracks to, to do that sort of fine-tuning tune, fine alignment. We've been fortunate to have a number of partners in this. We received some funding from the Knight Foundation. We were successful in the first couple stages of the Mozilla Ignite Challenge funded by the NSF. You might also be familiar with the human rights organizations. I, and previously to coming to the Data and Democracy Initiative, I was at the Human Rights Center, also at UC Berkeley. And WITNESS and the Guardian Project use video for human rights um, advocacy and, and security and anonymity for activists working in the field. So this is a project team. Ken Goldberg is the faculty director and, uh, of DDI, and he's also the lead on this project, working with the programmer at UC Santa Cruz also on this project. If you haven't caught onto the uh, root of the name, the Rashomon Project, Rashomon was a Kurosawa film where a number of different perspectives and stories are told about the same event. So that's where the, the name comes from. With this, we're really hoping that it will be useful for citizen journalists, for anyone who really wants to get a fuller picture of what happened at a particular event, um, potentially could also be used by investigative commissions or eventually even courts. We've been talking to people, say, at the International Criminal Court um, about use of some of the video from Syria and elsewhere in some of these um, uprisings. Any single video could be contested or challenged by defense counsel, but we're hoping that by having multiple videos of the same event that it strengthens a, a case against um, potential war crimes. So we are actually at the point now where we are looking for use cases. In the uh, example that I showed you, that was a stage demonstration so that we could test out using different devices, but we would love to talk with folks at NDI or other organizations that might have contacts with activists who are using video in the field in order to get um, some real footage either from past events or up upcoming events. So contact us here. I'd be happy to talk with you. Thank you.